Hello and welcome to the World Cafe on Sustainable Development, brought to you by the European Union delegation to Zambia and Comesa through the EU Formulimi program. The aim for today is to take a look at Zambia's green transition. Is it possible? What are some of the ideas that we can come up with? Well, come with me and let's take a look. So thank you very much for coming. EU Mulimi is uh, actually the communication project that supports a larger program called the Sustainable Commercialization of Zambian Smallholder Farmers. And EU Mulimi is also in line with what you might have heard before the EU Green Deal, which is actually the European Union's Green Growth Plan. So we've all gathered you here today to discuss green growth to discuss and pick your brain on what you think uh, green growth or green transition should look like in Zambia. As the world grapples with the challenges of climate change and environmental degradation, Zambia is embarking on a transformative journey towards a greener and more sustainable future. Let's hear from government officials, environmental activists and experts about their visions for Zambia's future and how they plan to overcome these challenges. I am now joined by Mumo from Bongo Hive, who is part of the organizing team of bringing together the World Cafes. Thank you very much for joining me. Where did the idea for this initiative come from and why? Okay, so we were approached uh, by the EU um, and the purpose of these uh, World Cafes and panel discussion is to uh, bring together different experts from different industries to talk about, to raise awareness about climate change and to come up with different solutions to address some of the problems that we're seeing in the, in, in the Zambian ecosystem and also in the future. Um, so as Bongo Hive, we're an entrepreneurship, technology and innovation hub. Um, so we're always looking for innovative ideas for us to further develop and for, to get our startups also involved in solving some of the problems that our society is facing. We extract natural capital, we produce something, we use it, and then we waste it. We throw it away. It fills our landfills. We know in Lusaka we have a huge landfill. And it, it fills our oceans with plastic, and, and then it goes back to, to us, basically. Then we don't even know yet what it does with our health. Developing um, along the green path is the most efficient and probably the only viable route now because, as others put it, we are reaching tipping points. First of all, Zambia has been contributing 0.003% and the, the whole African continent uh, is contributing 4.2%. So it's quite minimal as a continent. On the other hand, the impact. We are the most hardly hit. There's a general acceptance by our colleagues in government that we need to do something to change the narrative as well as to change uh, our views about green economic development going into the future. People understand climate change more practical, um, especially those people living in, in rural areas. They understand climate change because they feel it, uh, you know, it gets into their nerves. They are looking at issues of reduced rainfall, reduced rainfall days, floods, more dry spells, which is automatically affecting the hills. Mm -hmm. So I think people are getting to know that things are changing. Zambia used to have about 73 districts, now we are 117. So that means um, more deforestation, it means more uh, agricultural expansion for sustainable cities. We're growing really fast, there's a lot of development happening, and keeping up with that fast 
pace of development can be challenging. So right now we're experiencing quite a few challenges in, in areas of energy, uh, water, waste management, uh, environmental conservation. We need to put the ideas together. We need to check the viability of the ideas. We need to plan around the ideas and then uh, implement because part of the planning obviously requires in financing. And I think that is, this is what, this is what uh, European Union is, is doing. Some of these ideas will come through the World Cafe. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are other ideas that uh, the EU has been financing, uh, including the Forest Future Facility, National Determined Contribution uh, Works, Monitoring Evaluation and uh, Verification MRV. These are some of the works uh, that uh, the EU has been putting together to mobilize also financing for Zambia. It's good to interact with uh, various stakeholders from different industries, mm -hmm. different organizations, and this gives you a perspective of things that you did not know and how you can interact with other stakeholders to, to promote the green growth. You know, one of the things we've just been discussing is how can we foster private-public collaboration? And that's a really challenging thing in Zambia. We didn't come up with the answer in the half an hour that, that we had, but I think, you know, starting to work towards practical steps um, that, that uh, could be used for that. You have a table with both government and private representatives mm -hmm. and everybody is sort of like a tug of war. What are you doing? What are you doing? But I think, like I said, it's very enlightening and I think the conversations are very progressive. The government um, representatives here currently are aware of what are the bottlenecks and where the hurdles currently are. So do the private sector. And I think the conversation has just been stuck on after this, what's next? Mm -hmm. How can we now find solutions that cater to both sides, the private and the public sector? I think it has been mind opening and just getting ideas that are coming from, you know, people that are working in different spaces has been quite um, amazing. So I can give you one example. Uh, somebody talked about, you know, the fact that we have a challenge when it comes to extension workers and yet, you know, the climate does not really spare anyone. So when you get solutions like how do we use technology to bring the extension worker closer to the farmer, then that becomes an idea that, you know, is very feasible. So there's a, a, a lot of talk around climate change and the green economy, um, but that, that this information and the awareness doesn't trickle down to just the everyday person. So I think a lot of the times we have these conversations at a very high level, mm -hmm. um, but what we did here is that we worked with experts that are actually on the ground um, that are working in these environments that understand the issues that the normal person is facing. Information seems not to be adequate mm. and therefore there is a lot of engagement mm. that is required to make sure awareness around environment and climate change is there on the market. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, the banning of plastic, there's still people that don't really even understand why it's there, right? right? Why they have to pay for the plastic or why they should stop using plastic. Um, but it still hasn't really sunk in deep and I think that's why a lot of these conversations are really necessary and also just bringing in people that are at the forefront of solving these challenges, for example startups, business people that are looking for ideas, social enterprises. Um, I think once we work from a holistic perspective, I think we'll be able to also address some of the challenges. For me it's uh, uh, education. We have to look at how much information our people know about the environment where they live and the things that are happening around them. So we want to make sure that uh, our education is improved and also uh, enhanced. In my view, is I think we need a little more awareness because from, so from where I come from, the public sector, we have developed technologies which can be used by farmers and these technologies are actually climate smart, but somehow uh, they are not being implemented uh, because the farmers don't know about them. Yes, we are looking at crops that uh, would stand uh, uh, various climatic uh, risks, but also markets, because no one is going to be ready to diversify into products that uh, do not have a good market. So we've struggled to achieve attitude change among the public, because that's the key thing. The, the public needs to realize that it is for their own good. It's not like they are doing someone a favor. We've been working on the bill on climate change for quite some time now. 
is important to ensure that we have a legal framework to give effective response to climate change. Because there are a number of things that you need to do need to be backed by legislation. But also one pressing issue is the carbon market. You know, it is very exciting. It promises to be an innovative source of finance. But to regulate the carbon market properly and ensure that the benefits are accrued to the communities, you need a legal framework. We have been supporting Zambia's uh, development of the green growth strategy. The first green growth strategy, which we hope will even come into place or will be adopted before COP28. This would be a great achievement because we have a number of projects in the pipeline which address, for example, the bottleneck of access to finance in greener technology, in greener transformation. And I think it's very important to pass legislation to make agriculture really also sustainable, both from smallholder farmer side but also commercial farmers. Uh, fair to say that this new generation that is coming up are a very different breed. Our own president has said that before. And I wanted to find out from the ministry's perspective, given that, let's say, the average age in Africa as a continent is about 19.7, if I remember the stats correctly. We have a very high youth population and a very high unemployed youth population. How is the Ministry of Green Economy incentivizing young men and women to get into farming and agriculture, tackling the food security issue, and also just looking at in terms of profit and making themselves contributors to the economy in the long run in a climate smart way? As you know, the Minister of Green Economy, together with the Minister of Small and Medium Enterprises, is about creating opportunities. And it's not just jobs where people are put on the payroll and all that. Entrepreneurs coming up with innovations that would help us move along this green economy. And there are a lot of ideas that youths are coming up with. Just this year alone, we incorporated one youth on the, on the copper belt who has innovated with an electric vehicle and we put that on the stand, worked with them. We were won the first prize government in, the, in that area. We are working with another group that has come up with an improved cook stove, which is very clean, very innovative. And so those sort of innovations coming from the youth among green technologies that need to be deployed. Interest rates are very high. It is, it is very difficult to get a loan. And if you are a young startup who wants to innovate, forget about it at the moment. You, you will not get a loan. So, so we have to develop together with banks, local banks, financial products which are accessible for younger people. And the good news is it might cost money, but it also creates jobs and it creates the jobs of the future. Because I think as a country like Zambia, and also like us in Europe, we should not create jobs in stranded assets, and in which are not future-oriented, but jobs uh, for the current and future generation, jobs which are exciting, jobs which have good pay, and jobs where people feel kind of a calling the younger generations that they do something meaningful. I think um, we all understand what the problems are. Um, what can be learned and what should be disseminated is how we solve those problems. Not mainly at a macro level of solution. Mm -hmm. How do you solve the problems at a small, smaller level to get to the bigger level, to get to the bigger picture? The solutions need to be applicable to w the nuances of the Zambian economy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where it is. How do you find solutions that are nuanced to the problems that we're facing as Zambia and not just Zambia as a nation, but Zambia in a community level. We need to bring out the knowledge, including indigenous knowledge, which people have used over the years to adapt to the climate change. Mm -hmm. But also, I think we need to sound a bell that uh, Zambia need uh, a lot of uh, high investments. Mm -hmm. We need more and more investment for climate finance. We need more investment on loss and damage. We need more investment in the area of energy, agriculture, uh, water sector. Once the equation of finance is matched with the human capital, then we are going to see a uh, huge change. Forestry, huge potential. A large part of the country is forested. Maybe not exactly forests, but a lot of woodlands and Yombo woodlands, very diverse, but also under threat because it links a little bit to energy. So charcoal production is, of course, getting very unsustainable. So one has to look very much into that. How do people cook? Where do they get their energy from? 
and uh, we are to invest in the grids also. We can green the city and, and make it more livable and so everyone can do their bit. There's been uh, some improvement which I've noticed in the keeping Zambia green and clean, particularly in terms of vegetation. Now wherever you go you find people are putting up some plants around their yards and that is a good sign. There's a lot of transition and there's a lot of change that's happening in the energy sector. So we're talking about green hydrogen, we're talking about electric vehicles, we're talking about green grids. So there's a lot that the Zambian sector has to adapt to. We're in a, an interesting place and one of the themes of today is leapfrogging. Mm -hmm. And I think there's actually a lot of opportunities for Zambia um, in that development and on that growth trajectory to get things right from the start and to do things better. You know, a classic example is uh, here in Zambia, we don't really use very many landlines for uh, telephones. We, we've jumped over that old technology and have gone straight to mobile. Mm -hmm. So I think in a lot of solutions to these big challenges we have, we can actually leapfrog um, the old way of doing things and start with a, a greener way of doing them right from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Climate change is a big issue and now changing, transitioning from uh, our old system to green solar energy is a good deal. One thing that stood out is the need for partnerships. It really opens up my mind to see how much of exploration and giving back to the community we can within the small ways. The bigger part of the work lies with us. One should not look only to profit but into impact, into uh, sustainable uh, investment impact and investment because at the end if we continue looking only at profit and shareholder value we will continue what we have been doing worldwide accelerating climate change accelerating biodiversity degradation so we have to change we have to take a return basically and we have to say okay business must be about uh, the people it must be about the planet and it must be about profit but profit alone is not a modern business anymore and this has to change, I think. Zambia, with its remarkable natural beauty, is determined to strike a balance between development and conservation. As it moves toward a greener horizon, Zambia serves as an inspiration for the world, demonstrating that a green economy is not only possible, but essential for a sustainable future.